She cooks pancakes, lets me eat as much as I want, doesn't mind if I get a little chubby. It's a good Friday. Amen. Hey, Takia, how are you, buddy? Thank you, champion. Let's give her a round of applause. Good morning, church. Praise God. Thank you so much for coming today. Um, Today, this weekend, is uh, the most significant weekend in the uh, Christian calendar and uh, and such a great time to get together and remind ourselves of what Christ has done for us. Um, If you've got your Bibles, uh, turn with me uh, to the book of John. You may have heard of this scripture before, John (laughs) 3.16. John 3.16. And for those of you who don't know, it says this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. I grew up in church my whole life and used to go to Easter and used to go to Easter services uh, every single week. And uh, I remember growing up when I was younger and I heard about Good Friday and it was the day that Christ died on the cross for us. And I remember thinking to myself, wow, I don't know that I'd call that a Good Friday. I was almost, when I was little, I almost felt a little bit sorry for Jesus. I'm like, imagine that. For eternity, when people think of the day you died, they say, that was a good Friday. I know they have a holiday for it and that sort of thing. And it's like, well, how on earth can we call it Good Friday when it's the day that our Lord died? Well, that's what I want to talk to you about today. I want to talk to you about a few reasons why, on the day that Christ died, that it was actually a good Friday. The first reason is this. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. The first reason why it was a good Friday is because it shows God's love for us. Christ died on the cross in exchange for us. And that just showed how much he loves us. You know, you would never exchange something that wasn't of equal value to you. You would never exchange something that didn't mean something to you. You would never spend $1,000 on a newspaper. You would never do that. Why? Because you'd say it's not worth it. Yet God sent his son Jesus in exchange for us. So what that means is that shows how much he loves us. I remember that I don't know that I fully got a revelation of God's love truly until I actually became a father. And when we had our children, then I really, I think I had a better understanding of how much God actually loves us. Now, make no mistake, there are times with children that they can do things that can be a little bit annoying, and there are times things they can do things that are a little bit embarrassing, but at the end of the day, we love them with our whole heart. I remember when my oldest son was born, and I remember when I grabbed him, my, grabbed him in my arms, and I knelt down on the floor, and I just thanked God for him, or something opened up in my heart of how much I actually loved him. That is how much God loves us. We know that because he sent his son in exchange for us. He paid the ransom for us so that we can come and belong to God. That's why it's a good Friday, because it shows how much God loves us. The second reason why it's a good Friday is because our sins now can be forgiven. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him. Why does he say whoever can believe in him? Because every single one of us is a sinner and every single one of us needs saving. And there was no other way for our sins to be forgiven. There's no penance you can do. There's nothing you can make yourself right with God. In fact, the Bible says our own righteousness is nothing but a filthy rag. That no matter how good you are, no matter how much you can perform, no matter what duties you can do, it's still not good enough. But Christ died so that and took the punishment for our sin so that we can actually be made right with God so that our sins can be forgiven. I had a mate when I was growing up and I used to share my faith with him. And he used to say to me things like, yeah, Ben, I believe in God and I'll give my life to him when I get my act together. And I said, you can't get your act together. There's nothing you can do. That's why Christ died on the cross. He died so that our sins could be forgiven. There's some people here that are Christians and you're still living under condemnation. Worried about the sins that you used to do. You need to understand, it's a good Friday. Because of Christ, our sins are forgiven. We no longer live under condemnation. No longer live under the condemnation of the mistakes we used to make and the things that we used to do. Christ died on the cross, took the punishment 
punishment for our sin, that we might be right with God, and so that our sins could be forgiven. That is why it's a Good Friday. And the third reason why it's a Good Friday is because it means we're saved from eternal punishment. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish. Outside of Christ, the Bible says that we actually perish. The Bible says in the book of Revelation that there's a place called the lake of fire. For those that don't know the Lord, that don't have a relationship with God, who are not made right with God, they actually end up in that place. And the lake of fire is not a place that any of us actually want to go to. The Bible says that the lake, Jesus says, that the lake of fire was a place where the fire actually never goes out. I remember uh, many years ago, and I heard this evangelist speak, and his name was Dave Reaver. And um, he is, and he was greatly scarred. Um, what had happened was that he had been in the Vietnam War. And when he was in the Vietnam War, he was um, on a boat going down the river. And as he was going down the river, out from the bracken on the other side of the boat, some men were shooting at him. And as they were shooting at him, uh, he couldn't see where the bullets were coming from because uh, it was full of jungle. So he turned around to one of the guys and said, give me a grenade, grabbed a grenade, pulled the pin, and he threw it uh, into the jungle. It was a phosphorus grenade which means that it burns up the bracken so that they can see who's shooting at them. However, it didn't work. It wasn't burning enough, uh, up enough bracken and he couldn't see who was shooting. So then he grabbed another grenade, pulled the pin, held it next to his ear. As he held it next to his ear, <laughs> the bullet hit the grenade and exploded in his hand right next to his ear. It was a phosphorus grenade and so phosphorus went all over him. He started burning. What's the first thing that you do? We well, actually jump in, you know, you jump in the water to get rid of the fire. But the problem is it's phosphorus. It was burning underwater. And so he came up and ended up going on the side of the riverbank and he started rolling around there. Eventually they were able to put the fire out. Then they called some paramedics to come. They had to park a distance away from where he was. They carried a fabric stretcher along. They went and picked him up, put him in the fabric stretcher and, as they, and then they picked him up and ran him towards the Jeep where they were going to take him to the hospital. But as he started moving on that, he actually got on fire again and burnt through the canvas stretcher and then fell down on the ground. A couple of weeks later, when he was in hospital, they decided we need to do some surgery to look at his internal organs to see if there's been any damage. They, uh, they, cut, uh, cut, they cut, um, started cutting his chest and opened it up. And as they did, because phosphorus had got into his esophagus, it started lighting up there on the table. It was a fire that never goes out. The Bible says that the lake of fire is a place with a, a, with a fire never goes out. The Bible also says that the lake of fire is a place where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. What that means is that it can be so painful that our teeth actually start to gnash. I remember seeing a missions video many years ago and they're raising up money for, uh, for, um, for missions for this medical program that they were doing overseas and they had uh, a young person and they would, had laid, them, laid them down on a table and strapped them down and then what they did was they got a leather belt, put the leather belt between their teeth and they were going to operate. Reason why they put a leather belt on because they didn't have any anaesthetic and they were raising up money to purchase the anaesthetic. Aesthetic. It was a place where there's weeping and gnashing in teeth. And that's why I'm glad that Christ died on the cross so that we're saved from something like that. It's a good Friday. He saves us from eternal punishment. That's why the Bible says sometimes we think, you know, oh, he loves us so much. It was more than a love act dying on the cross. He had to do it. He took the punishment for our sin that we might be made right with God. That's available for every single one of us here. You might be in this place and don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm here to let you know that you can because Jesus Christ died on the cross for you and I and that's why it's a Good Friday. And the fourth reason why it was a Good Friday. It's only a Good Friday because Resurrection Sunday was coming. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. There's new life after Good Friday. It was a Good Friday because Resurrection Sunday was coming. Without a Resurrection Sunday, there's no Good Friday. Without rising from the dead on Sunday, it would have simply been Black Friday rather than Good Friday. Something happened on Sunday that made Friday all right. Something happened on Sunday that undid all that was done on Friday. On Friday, Jesus Christ died. But on Sunday, he rose again. On Friday, Jesus was whipped, beaten, killed and buried in a tomb. But it wouldn't last long because Sunday was coming. 
Mary, the mother of Jesus, was weeping and standing at the foot of the cross. Her son hanging there, his face unrecognizable, blood streaming down the cross. Her heart was broken, but it was only Friday, and Sunday was still coming. On Friday, Simon Peter was discouraged and depressed. Last time he spoke to Jesus, they'd had an argument, and now his best friend was dead. But it was still only Friday, and Sunday was coming. On Sunday, Mary Magdalene was heartbroken. Former prostitute, the only man who ever treated her with dignity and respect, was now dying the death of a common criminal. But it's okay, it's only Friday, but Sunday was still coming. The disciples were in disbelief. They thought they were going to turn the world upside down. Everywhere they went, they performed miracles, and they'd been so popular. But the one they believed in was dead, and all hope looked lost. But it's okay, it was just Friday. Sunday is still coming. Chief priests and the Pharisees were relieved for a while there. They thought they were going to lose their position in society. The crowds had been following Jesus for three years, but now he was dead and they assumed that people would go back to following them. But little did they know, it was just Friday. Sunday was still coming. Satan and the hordes of hell were having a party. They thought they'd kill God. They thought they'd finally won the world. Satan thought that he'd finally achieved what he failed to achieve in heaven. He defeated God and Jesus was dead. But little did the devil know, it was still Friday, but Sunday was coming. The reason why it was a good Friday was because there was a resurrection Sunday. We serve a God for whom all things are possible. We serve a God who turns dead situations and brings them back to life. Some of you this morning are experiencing a Friday in your life. Things are looking bleak. Things are looking bad. Promises are looking dead. Things aren't going the way that you want. But I'm here to let you know it's okay. It's only Friday. And Sunday is still coming. We serve a resurrection God. It doesn't matter how bad things look. It doesn't matter how tough seem, things can seem to be. It's only Friday. But Sunday is coming. Amen? Some of you are here having a bad Friday, but today reminds us it's okay. Even when it looks bad, it's still a good Friday because Sunday is coming. And maybe some of you are here today and you're saying, Ben, that's exactly how I'm feeling right now. I'm in a situation where things are looking bleak, where things are not working out the way that I want, where things are looking disappointing. I'm here to let you know it's okay. It's only Friday. We serve a resurrection God. Sunday is coming. He keeps his promises. He performs miracles. He produces breakthroughs. He transforms lives. He changes people from glory to glory. It's only Friday. And Sunday is still coming. Amen? And so maybe you're here today and you're saying, Ben, that's me. Well, what better time to have faith instilled in your heart than on Good Friday? Because Sunday is still coming. Can I ask you to just close your eyes and bear with